Good evening, everybody. How are you? Good evening. Can everybody hear me? Good evening, teacher. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Great to see you, everybody, tonight. Let's see the ones who have joined this presentation or this class. You have Rufino Amilcar, Luis Enriquez, Imelda Sanchez, Jenny Sanchez, um, Morena Medina, and Roberto Carlos, and Luis Alonso. Okay, everybody, welcome once again to this new <laughs> class. Okay, I'm going to share the screen with you. If you just give me a moment. And here we go. Okay, everybody, let's take a look. Welcome once again. This is Inglés Intermedio Modulo 3. And this is me again at your service, Ivan Donyang. It's Intermediate 3, and this is session 13. And it's October 31st, 2022 or 2022, as you prefer. So what are we going to do today? Well, we have a very interesting class for you. This is the objective. This is the final section of this level, okay, final week. In this class, you will listen to a conversation when where real conditional sentences with if clauses are used in context, okay? This is um, probably new for you, probably not, okay? But don't worry because, because we're going to explain this uh, little by little, step by step so that it doesn't get confusing. So here's a conversation. And uh, this is in section 5.1. If I found $750,000, imagine that. Just imagine that. Finding $750,000, that's a lot of money, OK? Sounds like a very nice experience. So what are we going to do here? I need two volunteers, one boy and one girl, to help me read this conversation. Who can help me? Please raise your hand. I need two volunteers, please. One boy, one girl. Francisco Isaac. Okay, thank you, Francisco Isaac. Now we need a lady. Who wants to participate? A lady, please. Don't be shy. There's uh, Jenny. Okay, Jenny. Okay, so uh, Francisco Isaac will be Phil here in the conversation. And uh, Jenny, you will play Pat. Okay, let's read the conversation. I'll be checking your pronunciation and intonation. And um, after that, I'm going to read it myself just to clarify vocabulary. So let's begin. How do you say? Ah, okay. It's um, it's it's not very different from Spanish. How do you say 750? You say 750. Let me show you. Okay, look at this. So this is 750. You say 750, okay. So, how do you say this? Say 750,000. Thousand. Okay. Okay, that's how it is, 750,000. <coughs> okay. All right, no problem, let's begin. So Francisco Isaac, you play Phil, and Jenny Sanchez, you play Pat. Let's do this. Uh, now, uh, look at this, some guy from 700,000. Ah, well, well, 700. And concert? Ah, 700. Uh, 50,000. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Aha, <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Like this, some guy found seven hundred and sixty thousand. He returned, returned it, and the owners come in place. 
thank you him with a phone call. You are kidding? If I found seven hundred and fifty thousand, I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? What would you do? Well, I I go out and start spending it. Spending it. I could buy a lot of nice clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find out about, about it. And then you will go to jail. To jail. Mm, okay. You've got a point there. Okay, thank you, Isaac and Jenny. So let's read the conversation together, all right? Phil says, he's reading the newspaper, Daily Times. So Phil says, look at this. Some guy found $750,000. He returned it. And the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. Said so like, thank you very much. And Pat says, you're kidding. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. And Phil says, why? What would you do? Pat says, well, I'd go out and start spending it. I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. And Phil says, hmm, someone might also find out about it. And then you could go to jail. And Pat says, hmm, you've got a point there. So before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary or the expressions in this conversation? Yo sé que tienen preguntas, pero les da pena preguntar. Ajá, díganme. ¿Qué palabras no entienden o qué frases no les quedan claras? No se vayan a dormir con la duda. Van a ir ahí. ¿Qué era esa palabra? No le pregunté al teacher. Uh -huh. Luis Enríquez. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. I have a dog. Good evening. I have a dog with the word thank you. Thanked. It's a verb. Thanked. So uh, it's, a mm -hmm, it's a verb. So if I say, thank you, Luis, I thanked you. Es dar las gracias. Mm -hmm, that's the meaning of thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Justo lo que usted acaba de hacer conmigo. Me acaba de dar las gracias. You thank me. Okay. That's it. Okay. Great. Any other questions about the vocabulary or the expressions here? No more questions? Okay. Well, let us explain uh, the grammar here. More people have joined. Now we have Paola, Maria, Claudia Ireta, there's Michelle also, Natalie Alejandra, Roberto Carlos, Griselda also is joining us, Gladys is joining us, Olivia is joining us. Good, okay, a lot of people. All right, let's continue. So that's a conversation. If I found $750,000, but before I explain this, I want to ask you a question. Quiero hacerles esta pregunta. Cuando dice, if I found $750,000, está hablando de algo posible o de algo imaginario? ¿Qué será? It's imagined. Teacher. It's imaginary. Okay. Imaginary. Jenny and yes. Luis say it's imaginary. And you are right. We're talking about an imaginary situation. And this is what we call the second conditional. Let's take a look. Lesson objective. This is 5.2. By the end of this class, participants will learn and understand the use of unreal conditional sentences with if clauses. In other words, the second conditional, also called present unreal conditional. 
So if you go to section 5.3 of uh, the website or the online platform, you will find this. There's a video, a very nice video, nicely explained by Miss Jessica, where she uh, tells you about unreal conditional sentences with if clauses. This is in the platform. So unreal conditional sentences describe imaginary situations with simple past forms and consequences in the present. So what will you do if you found $750,000? Well, if I found $750,000, I would go straight to the mall or the contracted form, I'd go straight to the mall. I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. I might go to the police. I wouldn't return it so fast. So it, this is the explanation you can find in the video, but it's very short. So my job is, of course, to explain more, to give more examples, and of course, for you to do more practice. And that's why we have this, okay? This is extra, right? This is not in the platform. So this is what we call the present unreal conditional, okay? Present unreal conditional. So let's take a look at this. Dan likes fast cars, but he doesn't have one. He likes fast cars. He likes Ferraris, for example. You know, Ferraris, they're very nice. You know, a Ferrari car, Italian racing car, very good. But they are very expensive, extremely expensive. Okay. So again, Dan likes fast cars, but he doesn't have one. He doesn't have enough money, which is understandable. They are very, very expensive. So we have this sentence. If he had the money, he would buy a fast car. Okay. Usually, had is past. But in this sentence, have is not the past. Have is the present in this type of sentences. When you say, if he have the money, that means if he had the money now, but doesn't have it, he doesn't have it. So when we say, if he had the money, that means si él tuviera el dinero, pero no lo tiene. Solo es una situación hipotética. Es imaginaria. If he had the money, si él tuviera el dinero, o sea, no lo tiene. If he had the money. So, what about conditionals? Conditionals basically have two sections. There is a hypothetical condition and there is an imaginary result. And each of uh, these two sections have very specific forms. The hypothetical condition uh, uses the structure if plus the subject plus a verb in past form. Now, again, be very careful. El verbo puede que esté en pasado en estas oraciones, pero solamente es la estructura. En significado, no estamos hablando del pasado. Okay, the imaginary result includes a subject plus would or could, and in some cases might, plus a verb in base form, like this. Again, the hypothetical condition includes if plus a subject plus a verb in past form. If I, if you, if he, if she, if it, if we, if they, and after that, the verb in past, if I had, Si yo tuviera, if I knew, si yo supiera, if I lived, si yo viviera, right? So you use the verb in past simple form, but again, we're not talking about the past, okay? This is not the past. It's a hypothetical situation. And if you want to express it in negative form, then it's very easy. You just need to use the negative form of the past simple. Like this, if I didn't have, si yo no tuviera, if I didn't know, si yo no supiera, if I didn't live, si yo no viviera, etc., etc. For the verb be, we use where. 
It's also possible to use was, but where is more formal. I am going to explain this in more detail in a few minutes. If I could, si yo pudiera, right? Again, all of these are hypothetical conditions. And hypothetical conditions uh, go with an imaginary result. The imaginary result uses a subject plus would or could and the verb in base form, like this. I, you, he, she, it, we, and they would, and then a verb in base form. The negative wouldn't, and a verb in base form. Then you have could or couldn't, and a verb in base form. And also you can use might. ¿Por qué va un verbo en forma base? Porque estos son models. Y como vimos la semana pasada, los modos tienen una regla. Después del modo, usted siempre va a ocupar un verbo en forma base. Ok. So, that's the idea. Now, here's a, this is a very quick explanation. Or this is some very quick explanation, I'm sorry. But uh, we will have some more examples and more exercises. And some exercises, I'm sorry, in a few minutes. So, again. Here's the structure. There's a hypothetical condition and an imaginary result. The hypothetical condition uses if plus the subject and then a verb in past. The verb in past could be in affirmative form or in negative form. The imaginary result includes a subject plus would or could and a verb in base form. Now, if we go back to the example, you can see it here. If he had the money, si él tuviera el dinero, he would buy a fast car. Se compraría un auto veloz, un auto deportivo. If he had the money, he would buy a Ferrari. Okay. That's the thing. But my question is, does he have the money? This is a question for you. Again, look, Dan likes fast cars, but he doesn't have one. He doesn't have enough money. So if he had the money, he would buy a fast car. My question for you is, does Dan have enough money to buy a fast car? What do you think? ¿Será que tiene el dinero para comprarse un auto veloz? Does he have the money to buy a fast car? No, he doesn't. Oh. He doesn't. he doesn't. Okay, that's right. He doesn't have the money. It's all in his imagination, in our imagination. Okay, very good. Now, let's take a look at this. The verb be. You can say, if I, he, she, it, was, or you can say, if I, he, she, it, were. Mucho cuidado con esto. Fíjense bien. En el caso del verb be, cuando usted está expresando una hypothetical condition, el verb be puede utilizarlo si el sujeto es I, he, she, it, con was, como normalmente sería el past simple. Puede hacerlo. Pero... En estos casos, la manera correcta y la manera formal, además de hacerlo, es con where. En otras palabras, si usted va a ocupar el verb be en la condición, puede ocupar where sin importar cuál sea el sujeto. If I were, if you were, if he were, if she were, if it were, if we were, if they were. Si yo fuera, si él fuera, si tú fueras, si ella fuera, si nosotros fuéramos, si ellos fueran. That's the correct form. Sin embargo, de manera informal también se puede utilizar was. ¿Por qué les digo esto? Ustedes se van a encontrar después con gente que dice, if he was, if she was, y van a decir, bueno, pero el teacher dijo que era where en estos casos. Así es, gramaticalmente es lo correcto utilizar where. Pero informalmente, la gente utiliza was también cuando el sujeto es I, he, she, or it. Así que 
que no les sorprenda si lo escuchan en la tele, por ejemplo, o si hablan con alguien, ¿verdad? Eh, en inglés, y esa persona lo utiliza así también. Ahora, si usted no está seguro, ocupe where, porque de todas maneras, where es la forma correcta para todos los sujetos, pero solamente en estos casos. Si usted está hablando del pasado, ¿verdad? Si usted me está utilizando el pasado del verb be para contarme una historia, algo que algo de su vida o una anécdota, etcétera. Entonces, sí, cuidado. Va a ocupar was con I, he, she, or it. Y va a ocupar where con you, we, and they. Pero para estas oraciones, para los unreal conditionals que estamos estudiando hoy, entonces sí puede ocupar where sin, sin importar cuál sea el sujeto. ¿De acuerdo? Así que mucho cuidado. Veamos acá. If I were you. Si yo fuera tú, ok, muy útil para dar consejo, por cierto, esta frase, if I were you, si yo fuera tú, pero no soy tú, solo imaginándonos, if I were you, and you have some examples. Let's see, the first one is, it's not a very nice place, you know? Imagine a person tells you, hey, you see the rest, there's, there's a new restaurant right there, I want to go there, and then you tell them, mm, it's not a very nice place. If I were you, I wouldn't go there. Si yo fuera tú, no iría ahí. And now you're giving advice. Second example. It would be nice if the weather was better. Sería bonito o sería bueno si el clima o las condiciones del tiempo fueran mejores. If the weather was better. But this is informal. If you want to be more formal, you have to see, you have to say it will be nice if the weather were better. Okay. What will Tom do if he were here? ¿Qué haría Tom si estuviera aquí? You can also say what will Tom do if he was here, but that will be a little informal. Valid but informal. Okay? So very important, again, with the, uh, with the verb be in the condition part of the sentence, you can use where if you want to be formal, but you can use was informally if the subject is I, he, she, or it, okay? Before I continue, do you understand? Do you have any questions? ¿Alguna duda hasta el momento? No questions. Okay. I hear silence, so I understand there are no questions. Let's continue. So, what is next? Take a look. Again, as I said before, Present and real conditionals basically have two clauses. One is a hypothetical condition, and the other one is an imaginary result. The hypothetical condition uses if plus the subject plus the verb in past. The imaginary result uses the subject plus would or could plus the verb in base form. And you have some examples. Take a look. If Mike had the money, he would buy a fast car, okay? If Mike had the money, he would buy a fast car. Si Mike tuviera el dinero, se compraría un auto veloz. Pero no tiene el dinero, así que no se lo puede comprar, okay? Imaginary situation. Second example. Now in negative form, look. If we didn't have six children, we would have more money. Si no tuviéramos seis hijos, tendríamos más dinero, right? Un carro los hipotes, entonces. If we didn't have six children, we would have more money. Another example. If I could cook, I wouldn't order food every day. Si yo pudiera cocinar, no ordenaría comida todos los días. It's expensive. 
Another example. If Ellen didn't have so many problems, she would be happier. Si Ellen no tuviera tantos problemas, aquí se fue una coma que no tiene que ir. Ok, sorry. Ahí va. If Ellen didn't have so many problems, she would be happier. Si Ellen no tuviera tantos problemas, sería más feliz. And if we had a car, we could travel more. Si tuviéramos auto o vehículo, podríamos viajar más. Now look at this. In the final one, you're, you're using could. Why are we using could? Well, there is a reason for that. Because can is a modal auxiliary and would is also a modal auxiliary. You don't use two modal auxiliaries together. That is grammatically incorrect. So basically, can plus would becomes could. Cuidado con esto. Esto no es solamente la estructura de el verbo can en pasado, que sería could. Pero en una unreal conditional sentence, ¿verdad? Sobre todo en la parte del resultado, could es el equivalente de combinar can con would. ¿Por qué no podemos poner can would? O would can en este caso. Vamos a ponerlo al revés porque tiene más sentido. No se puede porque los dos son modos y no se puede combinar dos modos, uno después del otro. Ok, así que para evitar eso solamente decimos could, que es como podría. Y es lo que pasa justo acá. If we had a car, we could travel more. Podríamos viajar más. Ah, es decir, we will can travel more. No, eso estaría mal. Sería we could travel more. Podríamos viajar más. Now let's take a look at all the examples right here. And I'm going to ask you questions. Veamos. Pero no me den hablando solito. Eh? If Mike had the money, he would buy a car. The reality is he doesn't have the money, so he will not buy a car. This is the reality. He doesn't have the money, so he will not buy a car. What about this? If we didn't have six children, we would have more money. Pero resulta, ¿qué, qué es lo que resulta acá? ¿Tienen o no tienen seis hijos? Do they have they six have, children? They, they, have, they have six children. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's the reality. So the reality is, but we have six children. So we don't have much money. Okay, that's the reality. You see, in the first sentence, if we didn't have six children, we would have more money. This is imaginary. It's hypothetical. The reality is we have six children, so we don't have much money, right? Con seis niños, escasea un poco el dinero, ¿verdad? En el hogar. No, no un poco, bastante. Okay, so what about the next one? If I could cook, I wouldn't order every day, wouldn't order food, sorry, every day. The question is, can this person cook? Can, can this person cook? No. Oh. Okay, the answer is no. And you're right. The reality is I can't cook. That's why. I order food every day. Okay, that's the reality. What about the next one? If Ellen didn't have so many problems, she would be happier. So does Ellen have a lot of problems? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. she has a lot of problems. Okay, the reality is she has a lot of problems. So. She isn't very happy, okay? And the last one, if we had a car, we could travel more. Question, do we have a car in this sentence? 
No. Okay, the reality is no. Okay, we don't have a car, so we can't travel much. That's the idea. Always remember the present and real conditional expresses a situation that is hypothetical and imaginary, um, and it doesn't reflect reality. It's the opposite of reality. Okay. Before we continue, do you have any questions? No questions? No questions, teacher. Okay, great. Well, next part. Now, take a look at this. Again, there's the hypothetical condition and the imaginary result. If Mike had the money, he will buy a car. Now, this is very, very, very important. You can also say it like this. Mike would buy a car if he had the money. You can change the order of the two clauses. And it's the same sentence and it's the same meaning. Ok. El significado no cambia si usted cambia el orden de las cláusulas, digamos. Es lo mismo decir, if Mike had the money, he would buy a fast, he would buy a car. Que okay. he would buy a car if he had the money. Mike would buy a car, I'm sorry, if he had the money. Ahora bien. No solo se trata de cambiar las dos partes del lugar y ya estuvo. No, hay que hacer un cambio. Si ustedes se fijan acá, aquí dice if Mike had the money, pero al pasarlo al final no decimos if Mike had the money, ocupamos he. ¿Por qué? Porque la lógica nos indica que si vamos a decir esto, tenemos que mencionar a Mike al principio. Mike would buy a fast car if he had the money. Luego decimos he para no repetir el nombre de Mike. Lo mismo pasa en la oración original. If Mike had the money, he would buy a car. Primero mencionamos a Mike y después ocupamos he para referirnos siempre a Mike. Así que nada más con eso hay que tener cuidado. Y hay otra diferencia. Quiero ver si son observadores. There is another difference. A very, very small difference. What is it? Cambia el orden del word. Mm -hmm. orden del word. Yeah, we changed the order. That's true. We, we changed the order. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. But there is another difference. Hay una pequeña diferencia además. The comma. It doesn't have the comma. It doesn't have a comma. That's correct. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you, everybody, for your participation. There is a comma. Now, look, if you begin your sentence, with a hypothetical condition. Hypothetical condition. Uh, you need a uh, you need a comma. If you uh, finish the sentence with the hypothetical condition, don't use a comma. Okay. That's very important. Si usted comienza con if, va a necesitar la coma. Si usted termina la oración con el clause que lleva el if. No va a ocupar la coma. Esa es una clave ahí. Muy importante. Ok. What about this? Apostrophe D is the short form of would. Ok. Tenemos un nuevo participante ahí por parte de Olivia. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What, what's your name? Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay, let's take a look. Apostrophe D is the short form of would. Examples. I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, I'd tell you. That means if I knew the answer, I would tell you. Si yo supiera la respuesta, te la diría. If I knew the answer, I'd 
tell you or I would tell you. Another example, it's raining, so we can't go out. We'd get wet if we went out. It's the same as saying, we would get wet if we went out, all right? Emma loves living in the city. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country, okay? She wouldn't be happy. Ella no sería feliz si viviera en el campo. Porque le encanta vivir en la ciudad. So, she wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. Next example. If you didn't have a job, what would you do? Look at this. If you didn't have a job, what would you do? Si no tuvieras trabajo, ¿Qué harías? Pero si tiene trabajo. Es una situación hipotética. If you didn't have a job, what would you do? And finally, I'm sorry I can't help you. I'd help you if I could. Que es lo mismo que I would help you if I could. Te ayudaría si pudiera, pero no puedo. So I'd help you if I could. Antes que continuemos, porque aquí vienen los ejercicios. Quiero que se fijen bien en esto. If, esta palabra es clave. Esta palabra, if, es el que le va a decir a ustedes. Si ustedes encuentran if, significa que lo que sigue va en past simple. Si no encuentran el if, entonces van a ocupar would or could. Y el verbo en forma base. Pero esta palabra es la clave acá. If Mike had the money, he would buy a car. Or Mike would buy a car if he had the money. Fíjense siempre en el if. Eso les va a decir a ustedes. El if. Ah, bueno, entonces después sigue past simple. Afirmativo o negativo. Y en la otra parte de la oración es que vamos a ocupar would. Y el verbo en forma base. O could. Y el verbo en forma base. ¿Ok? Eso es clave. Es clave para resolver esto. Así que tratemos ahí de no confundir las dos partes. Porque el conditional tiene dos secciones. There's the hypothetical condition and imaginary result. ¿Ok? The hypothetical condition uses if and the verb in past. The result uses would or could and the verb in base form. ¿Ok? Y como ya vimos... Estas dos partes no tienen un orden específico. Puedo comenzar con el hypothetical condition y terminar con el imaginary result. O puede comenzar con el imaginary result y terminar con el hypothetical condition. Ok. Así que mucho cuidado ahí. Before we continue, because now we're going to do some exercises. Do you have any questions? Si tienen preguntas, es un buen momento para hacerlas. Si algo no está claro, ask me. Que no les dé vergüenza. Así aclaramos la duda, aprende usted y de plano, de, de paso, perdón, aprendemos los demás. Y de plano también aprendemos los demás. De paso aprendemos todos. Ajá. Uh -huh. Any questions? Francisco. Yes, teacher. Eh, prácticamente estaba viendo que en hypothetical condition uh -huh. eh, se habla de, del sujeto del nombre, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. eh, en imaginary result, eh, speaking, we speaking third person. Third person. Uh -huh. Ah, ok, ok. Lo que pasa okay. es... Mm, si usted se fija, en ambos casos es una tercera persona. Mike siempre es he. Solo que como empezamos a hablar, eh, al, al empezar a hablar, tenemos que mencionar de quién estamos hablando. ¿Qué sucedería si yo nada más viniera y dijera, en vez de decir Mike, vamos a ponerlo acá. If he had the money, he would buy a fast car. 
Imagínese que yo comenzara una conversación con usted y yo dijera, if he had the money, he would buy a fast car. ¿Qué me va a preguntar usted? ¿Quién nos ayuda acá? Ajá, Ajá me va a decir, ¿y de quién usted? ¿De quién estamos hablando? ¿Ah? Esa es la cuestión. Entonces, si yo solo digo, if he had the money, he would buy a fast car. Ok, todos van a decir, bueno, a saber de quién está hablando el teacher, pero bueno. No, entonces yo tengo que decir el nombre de él al principio. If Mike had the money, he would buy a fast car. Lo mismo sucedería si invirtiésemos el orden de las, de las, de las dos partes. Yo diría, he would buy a fast car if he had the money. Lo mismo sería si yo llegara y dijera, he would buy a fast car if he had the money. Usted me va a preguntar también de quién estamos hablando. Es lo mismo. Hay que mencionar a Mike desde un principio. De lo contrario, se va a confundir el interlocutor. ¿Ok? Así que Mike. Okay. Uh -huh. Entonces Mike. sería regla, sería, perdón, sería regla colocar siempre la, el nombre de la persona al inicio de las oraciones y no importando cualquiera de las dos eh, que sean. Si es primera vez que hablamos de esa persona en la conversación, sí. Digamos que ya desde hace cinco minutos estábamos hablando del tal Mike, ya no es necesario porque ya sabemos que de él estamos hablando. Okay. Entonces si yo dijera, if he had the money, he would buy a fast car. Como ya estábamos hablando de él con anterioridad, el interlocutor sí va a saber, entiende. ya se entiende, ajá. pero si no habíamos hablado de él anteriormente, entonces sí, habría que mencionar su nombre primero. Ok, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any other questions? No more questions? No more questions, teacher. Ok, great. So exercise time, let's do this. Your turn, complete the sentences. Break our rooms right here. We're going to work in groups of four. Yeah, we have the time. So there are 16 people, so four groups. Break our rooms, four rooms. Okay, everybody, room one. Is, uh, Francisco Isaac, Griselda Mendoza, Paola Maria, and Roberto Carlos. Room two, Gladys Campos, Luis Enriquez, Michelle Escobar, and Rufino Amilcar. Room three, Alexandra, Alejandra, I'm sorry, Magaña, Jose Vega, Olivia Osorio, and Jenny Sanchez. Room four, Claudia Iraeta, Luis Alonso Urias, Morena Medina, and Natalie Alejandra. I'm going to form the break of rooms now. Please, everybody, join your room, and I'm going to send this picture via WhatsApp. So let's do it. Okay, everybody, the exercise is in WhatsApp right now. I'm going to join the rooms and I'm going to listen to you and help you. Hi. Hi, hi. Hi. Bien calladito lo encuentro. Ajá. Y queriendo ver WhatsApp. Ahí está, ahí está. Todavía no lo han revisado. Ok. Ok, veamos. Veamos el primero. ¿Cómo sería entonces? Uh -huh. Thank you. 
Dice, I don't know the answer. If I, blah, blah, blah. The answer, I tell you. I have. If I had the answer. It's, have, it, it's possible. Answer. It's possible. But I will use a different verb. Uh, look at aha uh -huh, that's right if i knew the answer i would tell you ese queda mejor si yo supiera la respuesta te la diría okay i don't know the answer if i knew the answer i would tell you that's right very good you're welcome what about number two i have a car i couldn't have a, i couldn't travel sorry very much if i Mm -hmm. Veamos la situación. I, I have a car. Have that's the reality. I have a car. I couldn't. I couldn't travel very much. If I. If I. Don't. If uh -huh. I don't have a car. Okay. Andamos cerca, pero no tenemos que ocupar present simple después yeah. de if, sino past yeah. simple. Didn't have. Aha. I couldn't travel uh, very much. If I didn't have a car, ¿verdad? no podría viajar mucho si no tuviera, no tuviera vehículo, oh. si no tuviera auto. Ok, very good. Hey, pero ¿y los demás qué pasó ahí? Solo acá viendo. Que conteste Francisco. Ay, Francisco, que se haga cargo. No. <ríe> ok, Griselda, Paola María, Roberto Carlos, ayudémosle ahí al compañero. Ok. Please work on this. Communicate, please talk. Okay, that's the idea of the breakout rooms. Okay, communicate. I'm going to go into a different room now. Okay, um, see you later. See you later. I have. I have. I have. I have. I have. If I have the answer, have. if I have the answer, have. yes. If I didn't have, have. yes. If I didn't have, which one is that? Which number? Number two. Number two. Which one is that? Which number? Number two. Number two. I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if I. I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if I. During how? Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a car. That's right. During how? Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a car. That's right. Escucho mi voz con mucho. Retraso, lo digo y después lo escucho como a los cinco escucho segundos. Mi voz con mucho retraso, lo digo y después lo escucho como a los cinco segundos. Okay, that is correct. I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if I didn't have a car. Okay, that is okay. correct. I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if I didn't have a car. Okay. I'm going to visit a different breakout room now. Please continue. Work together. Okay, communicate. That's the idea. I'm going to visit a different breakout room now. Please continue. Work together. Okay. Quiero solicitarles a todos, por favor, que trabajen juntos en los breakout rooms. Esa es la idea del breakout room, o sea, hacer un espacio con un poco más de privacidad para que usted pueda trabajar en conjunto con sus compañeros. Pero en algunos casos estoy viendo que están todos trabajando en silencio. 
Y no es esa la idea. La idea es que se ayuden entre ustedes. ¿De acuerdo? Así que, por favor, comuníquense con sus compañeros en los breakout rooms. ¿Ok? Qué silencio sepulcral el que escucho aquí. Una tele oigo al fondo nomás. Sí, un masón. Ajá, ¿cómo van? Mary the number five. Number five, ajá. Uh -huh. I am not hungry. Okay. I am not hungry. I would have something to eat if I. Mm -hmm. If I were hungry. If I were hungry. Correct. That's the correct form. Sí, ahí puede decir, I am not hungry. No tengo hambre. En, eh, la traducción literal en español sería no estoy hambriento, así se dice en inglés. Nadie dice no tengo hambre, sino no estoy hambriento, dice ahí. I would have something to eat if I were hungry, ¿verdad? Comería algo si tuviera hambre o si estuviese hambriento. Alternativamente, ¿cómo podrían completar eso? Uh -huh. Y Alejandra nos dijo, if I were hungry, lo cual está perfecto, ok, pero informalmente podemos completarlo de otra forma. ¿Cuál sería? Has, mm, has, has, no, not really. Again? No. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. What? If I have hungry. If I, if I had hungry. No, mm -hmm. not really. Pero por ahí escucho que dicen was. Así mm -hmm. es. Was sería la otra forma. Um, recordemos esto. Muchas veces para estados del cuerpo, nosotros en inglés, ¿verdad? No se utiliza como en español el verbo tener. Por ejemplo, en español usted dice tengo hambre. Se dice también, tengo sueño, tengo frío, tengo sed, ¿ok? En español utilizamos el verbo tener para expresar todos esos estados del cuerpo. Tener hambre, tener sueño, tener frío, tener sed, tener de todo, ¿no? Entonces, así se utiliza en español, pero en inglés vamos a ocupar el verb be. Es el verbo ser o estar. Y se utiliza, a diferencia del español, que decimos tengo y luego utilizamos un sustantivo, en inglés se utiliza el verb be y luego se utiliza un adjetivo. Así, tengo hambre, se convierte en I am hungry. Lo cual literalmente no quiere decir tengo hambre, sino estoy hambriento. Así se utiliza, se utiliza en inglés. Ok. Si usted dice, tengo sueño, en inglés dice, I am sleepy. Que sería como estoy adormitado o estoy soñoliento. Tengo frío. I am cold. Estoy helado. Si usted. Tengo sed. I am thirsty. Que es, estoy sediento. Entonces, de la misma manera, si usted va a utilizar esto en el pasado, pues va a utilizar el pasado del verb be. Por eso es que dice, I would have something to eat if I were hungry. Uh -huh. Porque se utiliza la forma en pasado del verb be. Ahora ya vimos que en el caso de este tipo de oraciones, ¿verdad? Se puede ocupar was y were en el caso que el sujeto sea I, he, she, or it. Solo que was 
es informal. Si usted quiere ser formal y gramaticalmente correcto, entonces hay que utilizar where. Pero solo en este tipo de oraciones. De nuevo, si usted me está hablando del pasado, me está contando una historia, entonces sí, habría que ocupar acorde. Was, si el sujeto es I, he, she, it. Y where, si el sujeto es you, we, or they. Así que ahí, cuidado con eso. Let's continue. Okay, I'm going to visit a different breakout room now. See you later. Hello. Hi. Hi, teacher. ¿Cómo vamos? Ya terminamos. Ah, you're done. Okay, good. What about number seven? Can you read number seven, please? He can speak any foreign languages. Mm -hmm. If he can speak a foreign languages, maybe he will get a better job. There is a problem. In the if clause, you need to use the past. If you say, if he can speak, that's no. not the past, that's the present. No. No. What is the correct form then? If he, if he can, can. Mm -hmm. Mm, no, not really. That's that's the present form, but you need to use the past form. What is the past of can? ¿Cuál es el pasado de can? Cool. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, if he could speak a foreign languages, maybe he will get a better job. Yeah, if oh. he could speak a foreign language, maybe he would get a, a better job. Así es. Okay. Si él pudiera hablar un idioma extranjero, tal vez obtendría un mejor trabajo o conseguiría un mejor trabajo. Uh -huh. Así okay. es. La clave es, después del if, vamos a utilizar past simple. Past simple. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Good, good. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Teacher. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now and uh, we're going to check uh, answers together. See you in a minute. Great teacher. Thank you. Okay, everybody, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. I'll see you in one minute. Ten more seconds. Okay, everybody, let's check answers. Number one. I don't know the answer. Okay, well, sorry, I volunteer, please. Who wants to try? Francisco Isaac, let's do it. Yes, I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, I tell you. That's right. If I knew the answer, I tell you. Just one thing here, the pronunciation. This word. 
The W is silent, so we don't pronounce it. You say answer. Mm -hmm. Answer. Mm -hmm. Answer. Es fácil de pronunciar porque la W no se dice. Solo es answer. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, I'll tell you. Okay, very good. Si yo supiera la respuesta, te la diría. Nice, thank you, Francisco Isaac. Number two, volunteer, please. Who wants to try? Nobody wants to try. Come on. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Number two, Natalie. I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if if I had a car. Ah, uh, but you have a car. That's the thing. Ahí tenemos un pequeño problema. Dice, I have a car. That's reality. Esa es la realidad. I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if I. Si decimos, if I had a car, sería, sería como que dijéramos en español, tengo carro. No podría viajar mucho si tuviera carro, pero si tiene carro. Entonces, ¿cómo sería acá? Ajá, por ahí escucho. José Vega. Eh, sería, I had a car, I could travel very much if I didn't drive a car. If no. I didn't drive, okay, you can say didn't drive or give me a second. Puchica, me fui mal ahí yo también. No, I well, ahí está. Okay, I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if I didn't have a car. La corrección no la había hecho. Okay, if I didn't drive a car, it's also possible. Okay, but yeah, thank you. So, I couldn't travel very much if I didn't have a car. Antes que se me vaya chispotear otra vez, quiero revisar aquí rapidito. Uh -huh. Okay, sí, ahí estamos. Okay, number three. So uh, thank you, Natalie and Jose Vega, for your participation. Number three, who wants to try? Okay, Michelle. I don't want to go out. If I wanted to go out, I will go. I want to go out. If I wanted to go out, I would go. Si quisiera ir, iría. O si quisiera salir, iría, verdad? Very good. Thank you, Michelle. What about number four? Volunteer, please. Number four. Luis. Thank you, Luis. Okay. We don't have a key. If we have a key, we could get into the house. That's right. Thank you. We don't have a key. If we had a key, we could get into the house. Si tuviéramos una llave, podríamos entrar a la casa. Thank you, Luis. Very good. What about number five? Number five has two possible answers. What is that? Volunteer, please. Olivia. I'm not hungry. I will have some time to eat if I was hungry. Okay, that's right. Thank you, Olivia. I am not hungry. I would have something to eat if I were hungry. Or if you want to be a bit informal, you can say if I was hungry. It's also possible. Okay, either form is okay. Good. Thank you, Olivia. Number six, who wants to participate? Number six. Number six. 
Number six. Michelle, and then Jenny. Jenny, you take number seven, okay? Michelle, number six, Jenny, number seven. To enjoy her work, she will do it, do it if she didn't enjoy, enjoy it. That is correct, very good. Sue enjoys her work. She wouldn't do it if she didn't enjoy it. No lo haría si no lo disfrutara. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Michelle. Jenny, number seven. He can't speak any foreign language. If he could speak a foreign language, maybe he would get a better job. Correct. If he could speak a foreign language, maybe he would get a better job. Si él pudiera hablar un idioma extranjero, tal vez podría obtener un mejor trabajo. Good. Number eight. Thank you, Jenny. Number eight. Volunteer, please. Two more, and we finish the class. Ya nos pasamos un montón. Lo siento. Me disculpo con ustedes, pero bueno. Mejor que sobre y que no falte. Ajá. Two more. Vamos. Alejandra. You don't have, wait, you don't try hard enough. If you try harder, harder, you will have more success. Correct. Thank you, Alejandra. If you tried harder, you would have more success. ¿verdad? Si intentaras con más empeño, tendrías más éxito. If you tried harder, you would have more success. Es lo que dice en español, ¿verdad? No le estoy diciendo a usted. Very good. Okay. That's it. You don't hard try enough. If you tried harder, you would have more success. Good, Alejandra. Very good. Number nine. The last one, please. Who wants to try number nine? Michelle. I have a lot of to do today. If I didn't have so much to do, we could go out. Correct. I have a lot to do today. If we, if I didn't have so much to do, we could go out. Si yo no tuviera tanto que hacer, podríamos salir. Okay. Nice. We finish this class right here. Tomorrow we will have more exercises. That means more practice. But for the time being, it's nine and nine. It's late. So we need to finish the class right now. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much for your time, for your patience and your participation. I will see you tomorrow. Acuérdense que mañana tenemos clase el miércoles, el Día de los Santos Difuntos, así que no habría clase. Luego tendríamos clase otra vez el jueves y el viernes para cubrir ese día que no se tuvo. Ok, así que ya estamos sabedores. Thank you very much and I will see you tomorrow. Good night. See you. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.